Welcome to the shop. These are my cheap digital calipers I've been using for about three years here in the shop and they finally quit on me. Right now they're reading negative 50 inches on some six inch calipers and what it's been doing is just taking off on the positive or negative direction and running away. I've changed the battery, no avail, and it's time to just move on. Now I had a few options. I could revert back to my old vernier calipers. These were my dad's and he made me learn to read these before I could ever use any digital gauges when I worked with him in his shop. And they're great, but I'm probably too lazy for that. So I went with the digital option again. Now online, these are $140 and these are 18. I've used these Mitutoyo calipers for many, many years in my engineering career in a number of different factories, and I've used similar calipers to these in my own home workshop. So I have some experience to speak from, and we're gonna dive into why these are a little bit better and why they might not actually make you more capable in your own shop, and these might be a better fit for you. I paid full price for both of these and ordered them off Amazon and I had the seller as Amazon. So you gotta look and make sure because the third party seller for the Mitutoyos could be a counterfeit. You can see the Mitutoyo has a larger case but they took some design inspiration on the Nikos there. I don't know why companies do that. They think they're gonna be perceived as higher quality because it has a similar design on the case but uh, it's $18 calipers so what are you gonna do? So inside I'd already unpacked it and loaded the battery in and put it through the uh, startup procedure and they feel really good. We're gonna look at the fit and finish and the feel of them a little bit more in a minute, but it is as you'd expect. Now let's take a look at the Nikos inside here. The first thing I noticed is it was just gibberish on the screen. It moved around and got locked on this number. And so I didn't know if I had a defective set or whatnot. Now it came with a battery and a spare battery. So I'm gonna try changing that out and see if that corrects it. And it did. That's kind of a waste to have that battery in there and it's already dead by the time I got it. But uh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Now I noticed the Nikos had a striking resemblance to these Pittsburghs that I've had down in my office. It's just kind of a second pair that doesn't get a lot of use, except the numbers are different, but the actual moldings look very similar. We're gonna be comparing the Nikos to the Mitutoyos though today to see the difference. Now from a feel perspective, I know it's hard to describe this or to get a sense of it from a video, but they just feel like a quality tool. Very smooth, you can tell they're good ground uh, surfaces that it's sliding on. And the Nikos, while they still slide pretty well, it's actually a little easier to slide them, uh, they, they aren't quite as smooth. It's, it's just a little bit different feel. So there is a subtle difference there, probably doesn't make a big difference. Now notice there's four buttons on the Mitutoyo and only three on the Nikos. Let me show you why that is. That fourth button is an origin button and you have an absolute position where everything on the Nico is relative. So here, if you open it up and press zero, everything will be relative to that point. And that's just fine uh, and you can use it that way. But if you do set your zero somewhere else, you have to close it and make sure you have a good zero to press that. Where on the Mitutoyos, you can actually open it up and use the uh, zero button there to set a zero. Then you can run, see that INC there means you're running in incremental mode. You can open and close them and then if you want to go back after you've zeroed it to the absolute position, you just hold that down and the incremental mode turns off and you're back to your absolute position. So why would you ever wanna do that? Let me show you, let's say you wanted to know the center to center hole spacing on these two holes that are the same diameter. I can just open it up to that diameter of one of the holes, zero it out, and then open up to uh, the two edges and it'll automatically subtract the hole diameter because I'd zeroed to that. Right there you have your center to center spacing. So that's a reason that you might do that. Now if I were to just run it in absolute mode, let me switch this back here so it'll be running absolute then I'd have to eyeball the centers there and that's difficult to do or do some math. Now there are some other ways to measure center to center spacing that might be a topic for another video. Let me know if you want more measurement techniques, but uh, you can see how that could be useful. Now another reason you might wanna use incremental measurements is if you're machining something, let's say I wanted to take that diameter there 
down to 750 thousandths, three quarters of an inch. I could check it right here and then I could do some math or I could just take my calipers down to my target value right there, zero it out. Then I can open it up and it'll show how much is left. So I can use this to know how many turns the screws I need to make on the lathe to be able to make that cut. And I can just watch it as I creep up on it rather than having to do the math in my head. So it can make it a little bit easier. But with these, every time I do that, I have to close it, make sure they're clean so I get a good zero and zero it out again. Just an extra step that you can save with the absolute measurements on the Mitutoyos. Now since we have something here, let's just see how consistent the measurement is between the two types of calipers. So this one we got 904 thousandths, and then let's check the Mitutoyos. Right here we are getting 904 thousandths and 5 tenths. Now I consider anything within a thou to be a successful uh, caliper measurement. If you're looking at tolerances that are less than a thousandth of an inch, you probably should be using a different gauge like a micrometer. Now these are some one, two, three blocks, and so I can check them to uh, see if this reads accurately, and you know, it's reading pretty good. But the challenge with doing this is I already know the answer when I begin. So see, when I check it, yeah, it, it reads that, but uh, here with the Nikos, I'll show you if I open it up and I check it, and let's say it's off a little bit, oh, I can lighten up a little bit or add a little bit of pressure to it. So it's kind of a rigged test. Now I can go through and see that it's at least in the ballpark here, so that's good, and, and every measurement is uh, within, within a thousandth, at least uh, for how clean it is. So that works, but what I really need to do is a blind test where I'm measuring something of known thickness, but I don't know what the thickness is myself, so I can't fool myself. You know, I'm not trying to trick anybody, but it's easy to trick yourself when you're measuring a thing like this. So these are gauge blocks, and they're ground and polished to a specific thickness, and I'm putting them with the etched side down, so I don't know which thickness I'm going to grab. And so I'll jumble these around and measure a bunch of them and just take my first initial measurement with both sets and see uh, how it does. You know, just some, some random ones. Now, I'm not trying to get too scientific with this, but just trying to get a sense as to whether they are uh, more or less accurate uh, across a number of values. So I've wiped some dirt off, so I'm not measuring the dirt. And we'll start off here. And I'm checking 143 thousandths and 5 tenths. Let's turn it around and it is 143. It's a little bit difficult to get the camera to see that uh, polished surface, but I'm doing my best here. Now this is 200 thousandths and it is 200 thousandths right on the money. Next we are checking 148 thousandths and 5 tenths or 148 and it is 148. So you can see it's uh, accurate. I repeated this a number of times and each time I was within 5 tenths there with the Mitsutoyos. Next, I'm gonna do the same exercise, jumbling them up again with these Nikos. Now when I try to get a good zero, it was bouncing between plus and minus 5 tenths on there. That has something to do probably with the resolution and where the zero lands, but the first gauge block we checked 139 thousandths and it's 138. Next up, let's see, it is 109 thousandths and 5 tenths, and it is 110. Now we've got 142 and 5 tenths, and turn it around so we can see, 143 thousandths. Got 199, and it's 200. Finish a thou on all of them so far. 145, right on the money. Right here we got 148. Again, right on the money. So I repeated this once again, and it was within a thou on all of them. And again, I'd call that a successful test. Now I wanted to check something that was a little bit higher in the range so that I could see if any error propagates or anything like that. I don't expect that from my experience uh, in the past, but anyway, we got uh, four inches and 950 thousandths plus five tenths on the Mitsutoyos. And with the Nikos, 
I ended up with the exact same measurement at four inches, 950 thousandths and five tenths. Now there could be five tenths of dirt on there. I mean, if you recognize how small five tenths actually is, uh, it's, it's a small amount. Now, one other question you might have is on durability. If you remember the beginning of this video, what started this whole story is the failure on my cheap calipers. So you might be wondering, all right, how long are these gonna last? Well, these Pittsburghs, while they get much less use sitting down in my office, they've held up for uh, several years and they look very similar to the Nikos. So I don't know that there's generally a longevity problem, especially for occasional use with the cheap ones. But I do know uh, after working with these in several different companies' factories that these Mitutoyos put up with use all day, every day, three shifts, and uh, still hold up. So your bet's probably better with the Mitutoyos, but honestly, uh, I think it's a bit of a fluke having that failure, and I'm more likely to smash them than to actually have one fail. All right, so at the end of the day, what should you choose? Well, there's no meaningful difference, at least from an accuracy perspective, between the two. So you're gonna be fine with either, honestly, for your projects. The mid tutorials do have a much better feel to them and you can tell that it's a quality tool and I've really been trying to step up my tools and I just enjoy working in the shop more when I have better quality stuff to use. So for me, that makes it worthwhile in and of itself. Also the absolute button on here where you can keep your absolute position and take relative measurements like I showed you is going to be a real advantage. Now is this going to be worth the extra money? It depends on what you're doing and how much you're doing, but since I'm getting more into machining and doing more of those types of things, I think for me, I'm glad I bought those better ones and I'm also glad to have another set of cheap ones I can use to scribe lines, throw around and take with me when I'm going out places and I don't wanna risk beating up my good ones. Well, thanks a ton for tuning in. If you enjoyed this or learned something, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leave me a comment. We'll see you next time.